All right, welcome back to part three of my belt series and why efficiency is important uh, with belt. How your layouts are working in a, in a typically flat layout. This is not talking about my vertical storage here. This is talking more about how things are, should be laid out on the ground to be the most efficient uh, in, in one level. On this spreadsheet here, I've covered over some details on early game iron production. So we're talking about Mark One production. We've got uh, Mark One nodes, maybe a Mark II belt here in this little bit if we can afford it. Mark II conveyors, uh, and we're splitting everything up. So everything in red here we can ignore for now. It's not important to later, but you might want to consider leaving some space for it. And you'll notice that I have nine sets of smelters here coming out of our iron ore. So we've got our, our miner, Mark I miner, and nine sets of smelters that we need to prepare to build at some point. Uh, and this is assuming that you're on a normal node here. I noted that um, you can double that for a pure node if you can find one, or you're gonna cut it half for an impure node. You don't even need some of these splitters. I just have them here for later reference. So if you can build them into position, it, it'll save you some time later. If not, you can just run this straight out. You'd be producing, your, your belt's only gonna run 60 on a Mark one, so this would actually be 30 and 30 coming each way, and then you can just split it and it'll be 15 and 15. I'm able to take one smelter, I produce one unit at a time, 30 times a minute. Uh, my belts can hold 60 and a Mark one, and I'm gonna run everything in. I'll get my 120 if I can get a Mark II belt in here, and I'm gonna store everything. Some people argue, why do you need storage? Why not just run it right into, into the thing? Well, your capacity on here is, I have it listed here, Iron Ingot stack at 500 units. And a Mark 1 capacity is 24 stacks, you're looking at 12,000 ingots. Or a Mark 2, you're looking at 24,000 ingots. And when you start upgrading your belts, if you can roll it out at 120, you're going to be much more efficient later on. Well, we're going to take this belt, we're going to run it out at Mark 2, and split it again, and we're going to start producing our stuff. So even, even with the Mark 2 belt, we're only able to run eight sets of constructors pulling out iron rods at a time. Um, you can see I've prepared to do future upgrades in here and produce rod screws and plates as I show down here at the bottom of the screen. But for now, we're just going to take our 120 Mark II belt, we're going to split it up, we're going to divide it up. We've got four sets of rods here, we're going to take four sets of, four sets of rods here, and we're going to produce screws with it. And now we get rods and screws. In fact, I would even take these two units here and start producing iron plates, of which I noted here, but I didn't update my, my list. After things get settled in a little bit, you get past your first few stages of the game, you're going to start going into Mark II production. Iron Ore is going to start producing at a rate on normal node about 240 per minute. We're dividing that in half, so we send 120 this way and 120 this way. And we've got eight smelters. Uh, and we're going to leave a space for our next one for later on, and I'll explain that in just a minute. You pull it all out at the rate of one unit 30 times a minute. So every two seconds on your timer, and you re combine it back in, you get 60, 90, 60. We add that up to 240, we're gonna store it in the Mark II storage. Let's assume that we're running a Mark III belt here again, and a Mark III belt here, what to do. Now here I've noted 24,000 ingots, 48 stacks of 500. The reason we wanna store all this is because we can pull it back out on a Mark III belt at 270. We can put it in at 240 all day long, but when we pull it back out at 270, it's going to take a full storage unit of iron. Let's say you're building other things while you're doing this. You're looking at 800 minutes or about 13.3 hours of real time to completely empty this Mark II storage unit. Just because we're still putting in 240, we're only pulling out an additional 30 per minute. So really, if you're just sitting there and the game's running, you, you walk away for half a day, you come back, this thing's full. It's gonna take you another half a day, or a little over half a day of the game just sitting there running overnight before it starts running at the rate of 240 again. So, store your units. You're gonna get a lot better efficiency once you get to the Mark uh, II storage units and the Mark III belt. 
So let's assume we're pulling it out at, at 270 per minute. We can divide this three ways. It's an even 90. So we're going to split that up 30, 30, 30. We're going to produce six constructors producing iron rods. Uh, they're going to take in 15 per minute and they're going to release 15 per minute. One unit at a time, 15 per minute. We can merge them back together, 45, 45, put them in 90, throw them in the rods. Same thing over here, we're going to produce another set of rods. We can make some screws at the rate of 90 per minute and we can produce plates at the rate of 90 per minute as well. All off of the Mark III belt and, and a little bit later game production. This is pretty much where most people are if you've been playing this game for a while. However, we've got this little bonus here. I call that when you start getting into overclocking. There's no need to overclock anything else at this point. Everything else is just run pure vanilla basic models. Now, we throw the overclock and we start running the iron ore overclocked, we can start producing at the rate of 270 and we can start burning off nine sets of smelters. And that's the only thing I've needed to overclock this entire game so far. Everybody's so hyped about overclocking and it all sounds really cool and sure you can produce more stuff in a, in a hurry, but in my opinion, uh, just overclocking the the miner seems to be the way to go. We can have all the numbers add up nice. You can't get too much more efficient than this than the belts can handle at this point. The belts can only run 270. No point in running them. Now you start getting into Mark IV belts, and you want to overclock or add in additional constructors and, and amplifiers and stuff. Go for it. And all you have to do to overclock is come in here and add on your additional spots 150% uh, more you can boost it up uh, quite a bit and start producing until this number hits 270 per minute and you can run nine smelters uh, you know if you want to overclock it even more and run 10 smelters that's up to you uh, just um, the belts are only going to still run at that same combined rate at 270 on the mark three if you can produce 450 per minute and you can run a Mark IV belt, that's pretty awesome. So thanks for watching part three of my belt theory series. Thanks for watching. Continue following and don't forget to hit like and subscribe. See you around.